Hi everybody, it's Kim from Expressions of the Universe, and I'm here to say happy birthday to Cancer. The Cancer Sun signs, the Cancer Rising signs, and of course the Cancer Moon signs. And what I wanted to talk about was how the Moon, or Cancer I should say, is ruled by the Moon. The Moon is all about emotions, it's the ebb and flow of the tides. Kind of like our emotions, you know, they're like a sea of waves coming and going. Um, our emotions, especially when the sun is in a water sign, can come and go, similar to those tides. And so I wanted to talk about that because, you know, we, we've been experiencing a grand trine in water. We also had the opportunity of that grand trine in earth to kind of keep us a little bit balanced and keep us grounded <clears throat> but with the moon controlling our emotions and that's how it shows up in your chart is wherever the moon is placed in your astrological chart that's where your emotions are and a lot of us are ruled by our emotions uh, some of us ruled by our heads but a lot of us go with that emotional feeling of uh, you know how we're going to carry out the next step, how we're going to move forward in things. If we don't feel it, we don't like to do it. Now also too, if your emotions are crazy and raging, you're going to get that energy back to you. And that's kind of why I wanted to have this video, is to discuss how the law of attraction, abundance and prosperity, and what shows up in your life, how that is controlled by our emotions and how astrology ties into that as well. So, you know, I always go with my gut feeling, feeling, that's emotion, and if I'm not feeling something, you know, I just have to say no to it. Sometimes out of obligation or not wanting to be rude, I will maybe say a yes and I have to get better with that. I have to put up my boundaries. My rising sign is a zero degree cancer, which is all and nothing all at the same time. And it is all about putting up protection and boundaries. And I'm really bad of doing that with other people. And I, my friends even um, have encouraged me very just yesterday that I need to start putting up more boundaries and so I will practice that you know my family is always pushing me to put up more boundaries and my mentors and advisors are always telling me to do that and it's really hard but I'm going to be working on that that's what I'm working on this year is improving my boundaries and and my own personal protection so anyway cancer is ruled by the moon and that is our emotions. Now you take that energy, which is all about nurturing and nesting and the home and the family. Uh, cancer, the crab, loves to be in its own little shell, its own protection, because Cancer, the crab's emotions are extremely high. Now if you're a Cancer sun sign, a Cancer rising sign, or a Cancer moon sign, you're going to feel that even more intensely. So it's not uncommon for people with that cancer energy to be introverts. Now you see me here on YouTube, you see me on Facebook and Instagram and all over the place, and I appear to be an extrovert. And I kind of am, but I really am very introverted and I do have to withdraw from society and withdraw from social media and withdraw from people in public quite frequently so that I can come back into my own shell and protect myself. So what about the moon in other signs? So you've got that cancer emotional energy, think about that. And then if say for instance your moon sign is in Aries, you're adding another layer on top of that emotional um, interior, so to speak. So Aries brings that energy of fire it brings the ego, it brings anger, it brings action, it brings war. So not only are you very emotional, but then you're adding all of that fire, fire energy, 
on top of it. So Aries moons can often be very destructive if they're not contained properly, if they're not balanced properly. Now the Taurus moon is very lovely because, you know, that's Taurus the bull, Taurus the cow. Very grounded, very zen, um, earth-loving, flower-loving. You know, it's about the gardens. It's the mother. So that goes very well on the layer with Cancer the Crab because Cancer the Crab is a very motherly and nurturing type of energy. Put that with a Gemini and now you have a struggle between your head, the thinker, and your emotional <laughs> heart, which is the Cancer. And so a Gemini moon also is the symbol of the twins. And so you could definitely have um, a very disruptive, unknowing, hard to make decision type of person. I would think that would be similar with Libra. Gemini is an air sign and so it just kind of floats over top of those emotions, not really sinking deep down into that emotional core. So if your, your moon is in Gemini, I would expect that um, you know you don't get very emotional because you're always thinking about everything and then of course we already talked about the cancer moon and I want to say one thing about the cancer moon uh, cancer sun sign cancer rising oftentimes uh, those people are so much the nurturer that they give away and they give away and they give away a lot of times that's with any water sign and they don't give back to themselves. So my recommendation for anyone that is a Cancer Sun, a Cancer Rising, or a Cancer Moon, please nurture yourself. Give back to yourself so that you can fill your own cup to give someone else a drink. Now, the Leo Moon, and I am a Leo Moon, uh, maybe that's where my extrovert exterior comes out. Uh, but my emotions can be extremely fiery. I do have to keep them in check. So you've got that emotional cancer, and then you're going to layer that with the, the fiery Leo the lion that just wants to roar. So it's similar to the Aries. However, it's more of a regal and royal type of energy. A lot of uh, people with that Leo energy, they feel entitled to certain things. Uh, Leos carry a lot of entitlement and they will never admit that but they all feel very special so that Leo energy is fire it's about getting things done but it's getting it done with a sense of um, royalty you know they'll let other people do things for that maybe but you just have to make sure that you can contain that ego and the anger it's still there with that fire sign so the next sign would be Virgo, and Virgo is another earth sign. So you've got that emotional cancer, the crab. You're layering it with analytical, down-to-earth Virgo. And when a person's moon is in Virgo, they also are in their mind. Uh, sometimes ruled by Mercury depending on what school of thought you're using extremely analytical very OCD I know a lot of um, Virgos that go the opposite way they're extreme hoarders but Virgos like things a certain way they like their things a certain way that's where their emotion comes in a lot of times they're pretty kind of detached emotionally as well because they are so grounded down into the earth and they are not in touch with their feelings that's what I feel about the Virgo so you should you would really benefit from bringing in more of that cancer moon energy to become more in touch with your feelings the next moon sign would be Libra similar to the Gemini it's the scales it's air so not always super emotional and they can never make a decision to save their lives so if you have a Libra moon and you're relying on your decisions based on your emotions you could have a really tough time because you're not sure 
and then you can get big knots in your stomach because you can't make up your mind and make a decision. This could really have you struggling. Now also with it being an air sign, you're in your mind a lot. So you're really thinking about all these different decisions. Um, I think that also too, it's another struggle between mind and heart. And you can definitely benefit from really tapping into your emotions and saying, if it's not a hell yes, then it's got to be a hell no. So if you're not really feeling things with your whole emotional being, then you should just reject any kind of um, idea or notion or request from other people. The next moon sign is Scorpio. So here we have Cancer the Crab. And then you're going to couple that and layer that with another water sign, which is Scorpio, the scorpion, the dragon. And this could be quite dangerous. You know, that Scorpio moon, not only is it intuitive, um, but, you know, you are going to allow your emotions to rule. And if you're hurt, kind of like at almost any water sign, if you're hurt, you're going to sting back. You will retaliate. You will be vindictive. However, you can use that emotion constructively and take that nurturing and loving aspect from Cancer the Crab and try and use that instead of, you know, that striking back. A lot of times Scorpios, a Scorpio moon energy, they will be preemptive and they'll strike thinking that there's an attack up ahead, but um, when it's not really true because they're not waiting. They don't want to wait to see how something plays out. They, they would rather kill before, you know, even taking the chance that there is a threat there. Uh, Scorpio moons are extremely dark. A lot of times uh, addictions are prevalent with a Scorpio moon because they can't deal with their emotions. They go to very dark places. Uh, Scorpio is the ruler of the underworld, the eight pals, Pluto. So it, it's just a very dark and heavy energy. It's the murkiness of like a, a bog as opposed to the crab of cancer living in that free-flowing ocean or even Pisces in in the pond being able to swim around you know that scorpion energy is just um, very much in the muck so then we have Sagittarius moon so you're taking cancer the crab and you're layering it that with that fiery Sagittarius moon the centaur half man half horse very independent, also of two minds. There's a part of the Sag that wants to be grounded, but that fire action has them going. Uh, very hard to pin down a Sagittarius moon. I would be very reluctant to get involved with someone in a romantic sense that has a Sagittarius moon, maybe even sun or rising. Sorry, Sages, but you know, it's really hard to pin them down because they love their freedom and they love their independence. And so, how does that go with that moon energy, with their emotions? Um, I think that they're fun and free-loving, and you'll love that. And they play on that emotional, um, you know, friskiness, so to speak. But if you try and pin down somebody with a Sagittarius moon, that's when you'll feel their fire. That's when they will lash out and you will feel their wrath. Now, moving on to Capricorn moon people. And we are coming into a full moon in Capricorn. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. It will be at six degrees, which says, what are you open to receiving or what are you not open to? Now you take that emotional cancer moon, that watery sign, you're going to pair it with yet another earth sign, that Capricorn. It doesn't really go so well because Capricorns do not allow the emotion in either. They're very out of touch with their feelings. They block themselves in, but this is where it could go with the cancer because, you know, cancer likes to crawl into its little shell and... 
uh, the Capricorns will put themselves in their own little bubble of protection. So it's kind of the same thing. They don't really have that exos ectos exoskeleton like the crab does, but they'll put up like an imaginary bubble and introvert within themselves. Uh, they're very nose to the grindstone type of people. Capricorn rules government, it, it rules institutions, um, organizations. It's our structure here on planet Earth is ruled by Capricorn. Our money is ruled by Capricorn. And Saturn is the ruling planet of Capricorn, which I always like to call the karma police. And um, so, you know, there, the karma police is always watching out for everybody. But Capricorn moons, they really just don't have a whole lot of emotion behind things because they're just, you know, about that structure. So I would take that cancer energy and try to get more in touch with your emotions if you do have a Capricorn moon. The Aquarius moon. They're also, they're very strange. Um, Aquarius is that very alien energy from another planet. They're not in touch with their feelings. It's another air sign. They live at the depths of the ocean. Aquarians, although they're an air sign and they are symbolized by a, by a human, it also feels like a water sign, although not in the emotional sense. They're the water bearer, and so they're bringing you fresh new ideas. They're bringing you fresh new innovations. But, you know, don't screw with an aquarium because they will crush you. Um, they will just squash you down and walk right over you. They're very cold and detached, and they don't have that emotion. So that's what I feel with the Aquarian moon and you too would benefit from allowing your emotions to or becoming more in touch with your emotions because you'll be able to attract more abundance and more prosperity or right situations into your life Aquarius and then finally the Pisces moon so here we go with another water sign a Pisces moon is also very intuitive, very psychic, and free-flowing. You know, if you allow yourself to free-flow through that pond, Pisces, uh, you can pick up a lot of information. So you also, too, do not have that protective exterior, that ec ectoskeleton, like the crab does. So here we have emotion on top of emotion. Pisces will withdraw within themselves. They're also very good with um, finding devices of escapism. Uh, and here comes my little cat who is a Pisces. She's a Aquarius Pisces cusp. Anyway, they are very good at escapism. So you take that Pisces moon, which is all about that emotion, and they will get themselves lost in alcohol and drugs and other ways to escape reality because they don't want to deal with their emotions. And that's the downfall of a Pisces moon. So with that said, that's, that's all I have about the moon energy and um, for each of the signs on the precipice of a full moon in Capricorn. I don't expect that we'll be very emotional on that day, although, you know, you never know. Full moons make people go crazy. And so I'm just saying, just try and stay grounded in that Capricorn energy, that Earth energy, and don't let your emotions get the best of you because it will ruin anything wonderful coming to you via Law of Attraction. What's going to show up at your door is the same crap that you are energetically emoting outward. So always try and remember that. Even if you could stop yourself in mid-temper tantrum, you're best doing that and then just trying to change that around. Think of why challenges are brought to you, the reasons, the lessons, and what it is that you can take and learn from 
that lesson in that moment when a challenge does arrive. You know, nothing goes to waste. Nothing is not for our own benefit, just so that you know. And um, I'm a prime example. I, I walk my walk and I talk my talk. And every time a challenge comes my way, it's my job to try and handle it and do better. And over the last couple of weeks, I would say I get an A-plus in challenges and obstacles because I think I've handled things beautifully and everything worked out in my favor. We can't ever imagine how things are going to work out or, you know, we think we know how we want things to work out. We can't imagine the full scope of you know what is coming our way and so if we just kind of go with the flow kind of like that Pisces energy you know floating in the stream or floating in the pond we just go with the flow and see what is presented to us and we take a deep breath and we say to ourselves okay what do I do with this information what do I do with this challenge how can I handle this why is this being brought to me ask the angels or your spirit guides to show you a sign ask them for help you know, there are often times that I put my hands together and I say, I need a miracle, angels. You know, I do it a lot. And the, and it shows up. The right people, the right opportunities, the right places, the right deals always show up for me. So with that said, happy full moon, happy moon energy, happy birthday, Cancer. I love you all. Peace and blessings. Stay tuned. For another installment from Expressions of the Universe.